Robert E. Howard's greatest creations are attacked by beasts from within and without, but at least one story has a twist you won't see coming. We're going to talk about it right here in our review of The Savage Sword of Conan, number three from Titan Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of The Savage Sword of Conan, number three from Titan Comics. We return to the many worlds of Robert E. Howard with a black and white anthology filled with monsters, mayhem, and grim fighters to get your pulp loving pulse racing. It's a pretty awesome issue, and we're going to talk about each of the shorts as well as some of the bonus material coming up. We begin with a short called The Wolves of Tundra by Frank Thierry and artist Terry Nord. A savage werewolf stalks through the snowy woods when it happens upon a farmhouse filled with a simple family inside enjoying their dinner. The werewolf blasts through the door to claim its next feast, but the tables turn when the beast finds the family is also a pack of werewolves, ready and waiting to deal with the lone wolf infringing on their territory. But wait a minute, there's an even bigger twist. All is not as it seems when the lone werewolf kills the family. After satisfying its hunger, we learn the beast is actually Conan the Barbarian on a quest to rid himself of a curse that has recently inflicted him. Now wait a minute, you might say, that's that's too big a twist, you're spoiling the whole thing. Not quite. That twist actually happens in the first one or two pages. It's what happens after that that makes the story even more interesting. So if you're interested, please pick up this issue. Frank Thierry takes a seldom used path of placing Conan in the role of both hero and monster, and it's very effective. There's an energetic pace, you get an interesting mix of pulp action and horror, which is one of our personal favorites, mine included, and Carrie Nord's art is fantastic. If you're a Conan fan, you're going to love this story. Plus, there's a high amount of blood and viscera and stuff getting splattered all over the place, and it works really well within the black and white format. So this was a good story choice for this particular type of anthology series. To top the story off with a high note, Thierry sets up a humorous ending that completely works. It's not a jokey ending, but it's more of those ironic twist endings that gives you a little bit of a chuckle. So horror, pulp action, and even a little bit of humor. It all works together. So this is the main story of the anthology, and it's a winner. Let's move over to Master of the Hunt, which is the third part and the final part in Patch Zercher's Solomon Kane story. We learned previously that Solomon Kane was on the hunt for a Gaur, which is sort of a large, kind of a Bigfoot werewolf type creature who had kidnapped a boy named Roland, and Solomon's trying to save the boy before he's eaten. As we pick up in this issue, the Gaur we learn through a flashback is one of several shadow creatures enslaved to the high, fair people of Anwin, ruled by the Lord of the Hunt, Arwarn. Some of these are tongue twisters, so bear with me. The Gaur murdered his way to escape from the mines of Anwin and finds a new home here in the forest lands around humanity, where he wants to hunt and live as he sees fit. That brings us back to the present, where Solomon Cain enters the abandoned, run-down castle where the Gaur has set up a nest or some kind of living area, and Roland is in the next room tied up, ready to be the Gaur's next meal. Maybe, we're not quite sure. Kane engages in this fight with the Gaur using his pistols and his sword, but it is no match for the Gaur's massive strength and endurance. Kane therefore then uses the gift of the magical horn he received in the previous issue that summons the Lord of the Hunt, Arwarn, to level the playing field and hopefully win the fight. If you're wondering what happens next, we're not going to spoil it. All I'll say is it's a satisfying conclusion. But let's be honest, Solomon Kane doesn't have anywhere near the size of fan base as Conan, which is the other famous Robert E. Howard property. But if Titan can keep up this quality of storytelling, both in the art and the writing that they did here with Patrick Zercher, he's got a good shot at becoming much more popular than he is right now, because this story was excellent from start to finish. You're really going to enjoy further adventures, hopefully, if Patrick Zercher comes back. This is the only pulp character that mi mixes sort of eldritch horror and swashbuckling adventure in this way. So it really is a unique property, and I hope more people seek out more Solomon K material wherever they can find it. The last story in the anthology is a silent short story by Alan Kwa, who also does the writing and the art, called Lure of the Pit Creature. 
Conan finds himself low on coin and prospects. Suddenly a sinkhole opens up in the road as he's riding on his horse and the sinkhole swallows him up with the horse and they drop down into a cavern at the end of a deep shaft. The horse is killed but Conan survives and he roams around to try to discover where he is in this cavern and where he needs to go next. Suddenly he's spotted by a beautiful maiden who's standing at the entrance of one of the side tunnels. Conan gives chase because he's trying to figure out what's going on. Plus, she's, you know, let's be honest, pretty good looking. But he soon learns that the alluring bait comes in all shapes and sizes. That's kind of going to give you a hint or a tease about what happens next, but we're not going to spoil what happens afterward. Alan Quas' silent short is a simple but effective one and done that has all the hallmarks of a classic Conan story. You have ancient caves, beautiful maidens, horrific monsters, and it all culminates in a big fight to the death that only a warrior of Conan's caliber can survive. So all the piece parts that you're looking for in a Conan story are right there. So Alan Qua nails the, if you want to call it, the Conan formula. As a minor down point though to this short story, some of the finer details in the artwork are a little hard to make out. For example, you have in the opening page, you see this montage of panels where Conan is figuring out he's low on money, but you don't really figure that out until a little bit later because the way the artwork is presented, the details are just sort of a little too amorphous to figure out. That's problem number one. Uh, problem number two is during the fight choreography for this big climactic battle, the choreography progression gets a little wonky. There are some scenes where you jump from one panel to the next where Conan is now in different positions and it doesn't make visual sense so you get a little tripped up overall the art's not bad at all but there are a few points where you get taken out of the story because you have to backtrack to reassess what your eye saw to kind of make sense of it let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture and also some of the bonus materials that are included in this issue of the three shorts only the solomon kane story connects to the previous two issues or anything that's remotely similar to established with robert e howard war the conan stories are one and done without any references that would place them in a specific time period or connect them to one of the more famous Conan stories. That's not a bad thing at all, just letting you know that these are very much in isolation stories and you can enjoy them just as they are without having to understand any of the background. With respect to the bonus material, you get two pieces of interesting information. First, you get an original poem by writer Jim Zub and artist Robert De La Torre, who are the writer-artist team on the main Conan series and it's a nice poem you're gonna like that a lot it's very pulpy rich deep sort of epic feel to it which is fantastic also you get an excerpt from the forthcoming Conan City of the Dead novel by writer John C. Hockey final thoughts what do we think about the Savage Sword of Conan number three from Titan Comics this issue and the series as a whole demonstrates how a successful a publisher can be with a licensed property when it puts the care and the time into selecting creators who love the property, respect the source material, and take the craft of storytelling seriously. All the shorts in this, in this anthology are must-haves for Robert E. Howard fans. If you like Conan, you get great stuff here. If you like Solomon Kane, get great stuff here. If you like your Robert E. Howard stories that are a mix of prose and art, and poetry in different forms and factors and shapes and sizes, you get it all in this issue. And that's exactly what you're looking for, especially if you're a Robert E. Howard fan. This was a great issue from front to back. Therefore, we're gonna give The Savage Sword of Conan number three from Titan Comics a nine out of 10. It's a high score, it's a good score, it's an earned score. Let us know what you think. Are you a Conan fan? Give us a thumbs up. If you are a Solomon Kane fan, give us a thumbs up. If you're just in general a Robert E. Howard fan, give us a thumbs up. Before you leave, I have a question for you and I need you to answer so we're trying to gather data and figure out what's going on. Between the two series, you have the Jim Zub written, serialized, full color version of Conan, and then you have this black and white anthology series with a number of guest artists and writers. Which do you prefer? Do you like the full color serialized continuous story or do you like the anthology that gives you a lot of variety and gives you that sort of grimmer, darker, grittier black and white look with a lot more variety in the tone and the visuals? Let us know what you think. I want you to leave a comment down below and give us your opinion. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining. And please stay tuned through the outro for the next review.